Hey, welcome to the Roll for Crit podcast, the official podcast for the online board game store at rollforcrit.com. Watch, shop, play. I'm Jonathan Estes. And I'm Will Keeler. And today in board game history, actually recently the new Magic Spoilers for the new set called Based on Eldritch Moon is coming out. But little Ooh. is known that Saint today was also the day that Lovecraft released his card game, Cthulhu really? the Gathering. <laughs> oh, I love Cthulhu the Gathering. Unfortunately... Didn't work out so well because no one could actually pronounce any of the cards. <laughs> well, I also heard that if you played it for too long, you went crazy. Yes. But uh, mostly because you didn't know the rules and you got angry. You didn't know the rules. <laughs> the, they kept releasing new sets that made old sets obsolete, didn't make any sense. There were some cards that were colors that had never been seen by the human eye before and couldn't from be outer described. Space. <laughs> the color from outer space. Yeah, yeah. With a U in the word yes, color okay. because it's, you know. Mm hmm. It is what it is. But uh, moving on from that. <laughs> let's, let's try to, we'll try very hard. Episode, what's this episode? 101, fresh start, 101. So these are your gaming basics. One, don't listen to these guys. <laughs> Two, uh, check out the dice tower, <laughs> tabletop. These are all great options. Um, no, we really do. Actually, there's a lot of good news today. Yeah. Quite a bit. So much so we had to cut a story or two. That's yeah, one of the reasons why I made that little joke in the beginning. So let's stop this. <laughs> Let's stop this crazy train from rolling too far, because it's going to be a long episode. First big story, the expandable card game, some would call it, Doomtown Reloaded from AEG, is coming to an end. They announced last week they, uh, there's going to be one more expansion released in October of this year, and then they will finish up with the tournament scene for the rest of the year, and then that's it. No more production, no more lines. I swear, my <laughs> friend who cl has like almost every LCG... He always gets on that train right as it's coming to the end. <laughs> yes, uh, Mark, who's been on the show before, I believe just yes. bought the, this. Just a, like last month or two, and, like been making the decks for Doomtown, and he got into Game of Thrones right before they announced the reboot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> doesn't have good luck with these things. No, he doesn't. I can't it's, wait. It's like, it's like sometimes, you know, like every time I watch a TV show I f that I like, I feel like it gets canceled the next season. <laughs> you just if, if Mark is into a game, just maybe don't get too attached to it. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, Doomtown is a game. We've talked about it. We've played it a little bit here and there. Uh, we've had our issues with it and our things that we liked about it. But it is kind of, you know, it's kind of, it's a sad thing. It, it had its fan base. It's not going to be rowdy. In fact, it had a fan base even from its original version, lest we forget this is reloaded as opposed to the original Doomtown. So the second time this card well, game has failed. Well, <laughs> what it makes me worry and also interested about is because it's very, very similar to the Versus system. Well, In the sense that of. it was, some, it was no, a CCG mm -hmm. kind of thing that got rebooted into a That's ECG, true. LCG thing. So I'm wondering, like, are we going to see the same thing happen, or will the fact that we have, you know, Firefly, Marvel, etc., attached to Versus, it's going to live longer? Well, I think two things. Number one, that they have, like, they have Marvel on it, so that gives them a huge leg up. The other, they're also very different in that Versus, I feel like, is much more accessible if you've played other trading card games. I feel like it's very much in that vein. You have creatures, like attackers, blockers. Well, there is the fact that how both of us needed Mark to actually decode right. Doomtown for Doomtown us. Doomtown is very, it has a learning curve. It's weird, and it's not, it's not even like any like Android Netrunner or any of those other games. It's like this area control Because it's still fun, poker, though. Poker, hybrid, yeah. it's weird. In, uh, a, in a good way, the yeah, problem is just it, that... You have to get we, adapted yeah. to it. And I think that's maybe part of the reason it didn't take off, is that a lot of people played it and didn't quite wrap their heads around it. The theme is so awesome. I mean, oh. it has a lot of things going for it, but it, it is kind of sad. And this is just after also their uh, Legends of the Five Rings card game that they also canceled last time. It was a CCG, remember? Maybe so, they just looked at it and like, we don't like this, the card game style anymore. It's not working for us. Yeah, I guess. I mean, they're, they're you know, they're doing Unless better. Unless Love Letter's attached right. to it. <laughs> <laughs> love Letter and Smash Up. I mean, that's, that's, the, that's their bread and butter, but I don't know which one is bread or which one's butter, but... Oh, I, I guess in my mind the love letter is because it's sort of like the small pieces. Which one is the butter? Sorry, oh, okay. <laughs> is the small pieces of like you know when you get the little things yeah, of butter you unwrap. I agree. And the Smash bread up is bread because you know the bread can be different types. So you know you get your whole grains like the Cthulhu, and then you get your nice one. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know what, what we are really good at whatever we're doing right now. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's not applicable to. But any. we definitely like to hear your opinion on this. 
uh, if you do play it besides Mark. Yeah. <laughs> Especially because uh, while Mark has, like I said, he only just started. So he's made some basic decks for each group, including the two new ones, in which one of them was, at least in my opinion as of now, is way overpowered and seems to always win. But I would like to know your opinion of what is coming to an end. Do you think it, it did run its course, maybe? Uh, do you think that it, is there something they could have done to change it? We definitely want to hear from people who have definitely delved deeper into it than we have. I have heard some people say that there was a, str the strat a strategy of rushing in, like throwing all your guys in first turn was no, really strong. No, that's what my, that was the problem. This group, my brother and my brother play with him, and each time he'd be like, all right, first turn, I play this guy. Um, I give him shotgun, nunchucks, I kidnap one of your guys, <laughs> and he's just Bruce Leeing right over your place. Right, so, yeah, yeah. so, I, it, again, interested to hear if any people have actually played it, if they had that same problem, where that strategy just works, and you don't have, and it doesn't you don't have to think about anything else. Uh, but, sadly, it's the last expansion in October, otherwise, goodbye, Doomtown, we hardly knew ye. <laughs> uh, I wonder when the next the Doomtown Reloaded Reloaded will come out, or maybe it'll be Doomtown Revolutions. We'll see. Um, <laughs> this, a big game, has ha announced a brand new standalone release in, for its franchise, Ticket to Ride from Days of Wonder. We are now getting Ticket to Ride. Wait, Ra are we getting the Cthulhu edition? No, we're not. <laughs> Close, though. Pandemic edition. It does involve the sea. Ticket to Ride Rails and Sails uh, will be released this year at Gen Con. It is a standalone experience, comes with a double-sided board. One side, which you can see behind us, is a world map. The other side is the Great Lakes region of Michigan, Canada, and stuff like that. Uh, it's Ticket to Ride as you know it, but there's water routes now. And so not only do you have train pieces, you have ships. And it's actually very interesting. At the start of the game, you get a certain number of ships and train pieces, and you decide how many you want to keep of each up to a total of 60, I believe. So some people might start with different types of pieces than others, depending on what strategy you want to go for. And there's two different decks. There's the train cards deck and the ship cards decks with their own colors. So there's two whole different types of routes you're trying to get. Uh, and the game also has brand new types of destination tickets where you'll remember in the normal Ticket to Ride game, you have to connect two cities to get mm -hmm. those points. They now have ones that include between three and five different destinations that you have to connect. So much crazier. And there's also harbors. Uh, you can build harbors next to a city you have a route attached to, which will get you more points depending on how many routes you have attached to that. This, Lots of stuff going on. This definitely feels like, because I think we would definitely agree, as I probably say a lot of times, mm -hmm. we agree on a lot of things, <laughs> that Ticket to Ride falls, the base Ticket to Ride, falls into the sort of gateway, very good early on game. This sounds like, let's now appeal to the much heavier games. Because uh, I'm already scared, I'm like, God, how many ships and trains do I have to keep? <laughs> yeah, well they had, I look in the rules, they recommended to start with like 20 ships and 40 trains. No, I like mean that. certainly because I'm, sure. Also, funny note, when I first saw the image, when you are setting this up, mm -hmm. uh, I saw that and I was like, why are we doing something about out of chore? <laughs> just in my head, yeah. <laughs> Which is sort of bad. I guess it is not the only one that has the world. Cool though that this is the first, I, to my knowledge, the first time the Ticket to Ride game with an entire world map as opposed to just one region. Yeah. That's kind of neat. I think it's uh, interesting to see how this what does. I, 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 I do want to say to your uh, fear, you no. Do it's like <laughs> it, like it's not. It's not a bad fear. Right, it's more right. of just my own anxiety. But but uh, you do have the option on later turns of exchanging pieces with ones you didn't keep by that, spending no, points. No, that's definitely, because I was definitely thinking like, imagine going through a ticket like, well, I'm already out of ship, so nope, right. nope, <laughs> nope, nope. Yeah, so they give you a little bit of room for uh, correcting those errors. But uh, yeah, it's a big, it's a whole big thing. No, and I think it'll definitely bring a new breath, hopefully, if they're assuming this is actually successfully and fun, to the tournament scene. Because there's gonna be a lot more thinking. Uh, it's going to be very hilarious to uh, ha see how people cheat this time. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All new ways. Those aren't ships. So you just painted your boats. Or, I don't know. That doesn't make sense. That's just a Jolly Rancher. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I play. Well, we play with Jolly Ranchers, and then when you win, you get to eat your roots. Makes it a fun, <laughs> fun and tasty experience. But, yeah, definitely I think it's them trying to up their game, which I think is a good thing. Which I think they kind of, you know, they've done with, Europe and the other ones. And they mo definitely the got monster adds that little more but complicated. This, but I feel like on. this is that really big step. Like those felt like more like 
little powdering of skill. <laughs> when this is like, like, like I was saying, this is a whole new step of actually having to. It's do a lot more, more stuff going on right. for certain. I do think the, while the ticket thing sound the three to the five mm -hmm. to me that's like well it's the same thing as how I got two tickets like I made a path so right like that's not too hard sort of shortcutting like it. it's sort of it's, the only thing that does is it makes it a little scarier for if there are those. You know, every now and then you get a path, like you see a path and then someone buys the one path, they're like, well, I have to go around. Right. <laughs> That's the only thing that might make it a little bit more. Yeah, and I don't know, depending, I didn't study too closely the layout of the board, but maybe it's a little easier to connect more than two together based on the, maybe because of the water routes, there's just more ways to get around. Mm -hmm. It'll be interesting to see, again, comes out at uh, Gen Con in August, so I am sure we will be trying it out there. And, giving, sure, and hopefully get a copy. Yes, giving you our direct impression. Now, yes. here's a question. When do we get the app version? That's a good question. I bet it won't be too long after the, after it's released because they're pretty good with that with their app and doing expansions. Probably within a few months of it coming out. Right. So this does guess. sound cool. However, this next one I know is extremely close to our hearts, in particular yours. That's true. Uh, uh, next up, a board game has been announced for based on Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Now. There were, in fact, two Buffy the Vampire Slayer board games in the past. We have a, you own one, and we've played it. One of which is actually, I think, pretty good for the a one you're talking game about. from the '90s. Yeah, yeah, or maybe early 2000s. But I mean, yeah, I think it does. It look. plays a lot like Last Night on Earth. It has some issues, but for a old game based for on Buffy, a, yeah, I mean, it's pretty good compared to like that Jurassic Park game. <laughs> right, the Lost. <laughs> it beats the Lost World game, uh, Island Survival yeah. Terror. Uh, this one, not related to that, new company, it comes from Jasco Games, who you may remember as the company that produced the Mega Man board game that was on Kickstarter uh, about a year ago. Or then and the that's just coming out right now, or just came out? It came out, like yeah. It's, it, I think it, it's had, it's Very one of limited. those production issue games, but the game itself, I think people generally liked. But better than the Mighty Nine. Yeah, better out. than Mighty <laughs> Number Nine, right? They they have a, that's a maybe a low bar. Anyway, we don't know much about this game. There's not much information to go on. What we do know is that it's fully cooperative, and there will be cards, there will be a board, and somehow you'll be working together to, they say, to uncover the plan of the big bad. So presumably there will be multiple enemies from the different seasons that you can go after, it's different scenarios, and you'll be playing as the different characters. I'm assuming Buffy <laughs> at all. And that for me, that's a really good sign because the first, the one that I have, which while fun, is not completely cooperative, and even on the cooperative side, it's not very well balanced. And that one person is the Slayer, and one person is Xander, who's like you will die in two hits. I like how it's, it's because I remember the where it's like you're this, this, and there's Xander. <laughs> yeah, it's which like, I feel bad, but that's sort of like it's, it's kind of funny. Fun. Yeah, it kind of works in no, a way. No, but, but I do think I'm this great they thing. That I out. mean, I. Would not be surprised if the crossover for Buffy fans, I don't know if you have a name. Oh, well, Weedonites, I suppose, Weedonites. but in general uh, terms. Or, uh, you whatever. Know, the crossover, I mean, <laughs> yeah. obviously. Scoop, the Sco Scoobies? Scooby, can't, go ahead. Just go but, ahead. anyways, uh, that with board game mm -hmm. uh I mean, we do think there's plenty of lore and stuff to make a great game. I mean, we've both mentioned how I think it would be very good in, uh, actually to refer a legendary set. Yeah, which they are doing Firefly, so right. not too far off. So, I mean, it just seems perfect for... And if the box art is any indication, there will, this will be an original art-driven game, not screenshots from the show, which I always appreciate. Also, I love how you, you, first you're getting your Harry Potter, you're getting your I, Buffy. Yeah, you're on a roll! Yeah, coming together for me. We just need Transformers for you, and then we'll be... No, no, what, what's going to happen now? <laughs> yeah. Next week, we're going to hear about a Gotham game. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. I'm going to go design that. That's going to be And great. then uh, the, the other show you like that you tell me to avoid watching because you know I might I won't. What, 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 don't say uh, the, not Horace and Pete. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That, we're going to get a board game of that. I'm, I, use, I believe many things should be board games. Horace and Pete may not be one of them. <laughs> uh, but you should check out those shows if you haven't. Anyway, Buffy Game comes out for Halloween this year, October. So. Ooh, so maybe... We'll be we'll showing see. it off. It'll then. be good. I think it comes out like right before Halloween, so we might not have time to actually show it off. But maybe if we're lucky, you'll dress up as Buffy for it. <laughs> let, let us know. Let us know <laughs> if you want to see that or not. Let's make a poll. Should Jonathan <laughs> dress up as Buffy for Halloween? But the weird crossover news does not end there. <laughs> I know some weird stuff going on. 
They have announced Hasbro is working on a musical based on Monopoly. <laughs> based on the movie. <laughs> <laughs> the board game, as far as we know, uh, of Monopoly, uh, still a few years out, just announced, but they said they're working with this group. It's A-R-A-C-A. -A. I don't know what that stands for, but this is they have produced a number of high-profile musicals in the past, like uh, Book of Mormon, Once... Uh, twice, twice, thrice, four times as nice. Uh, but uh, Wicked was one. A lot of like big, high-profile musicals. I believe that just means they funded them and like and produced them. I don't th think creatively we don't know. No, who's well, attached to I this. mean because we know Book of Mormon was written by right, Madden Trey. So it's it's not that's not necessarily a sign of quality. You know, it's sort of weird in my head the way I picture it. It's it's not actually about like you know the Monopoly guy or something. Mm -hmm. It's actually. Just like four people playing Monopoly. And here's the thing, in my head, it works. <laughs> like I actually feel like this tension of like all of them getting angry and like It's funny you should say that because That's what, what it is. The only piece of the only quote that we got was that it would not be that. <laughs> they told us it would not just not I mean, be that. I'm not surprised, but some reason that's what in my head I'm like that could that work. It actually works. It, it could like, work. For some reason in my head it works on stage. Well, remember there was that movie. Anyway, forget it. Sorry. But they did what they said was they they actually uh, cited the Lego movie as being their kind of what they wanted to do. So I think it is going to be the Monopoly guy walking around I mean, on boardwalk. I mean, that could work too, but just some reason, I'm just saying in my head when seeing yes, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, I didn't see like, oh, I was like, okay. Right, but, that, I mean, for another day. Yes. <laughs> anyway, I don't know. Musicals, I, you know, we, I like musicals. I like, I don't like Monopoly, but... I'd rather hear of somebody sing about it than play it. <laughs> well, maybe maybe they will still get the uh, Trey Parker and to work on this one too. <laughs> well, I mean, they are the they were the Parker brothers. Nah, stupid. Nah, just stupid. So, <laughs> yeah, I, you know, it could, I I think I feel like he could make like the Lego Movie, like we've said about board game properties being translated into movies, with a property like this that's so broad. There's no reason that it cannot be good. The, well, I just if assume you just get right because it, it's Monopoly, well. we'll just see everything in there. You know, like Optimus Prime will come on because it's Transformers, the that you know Darth the Vader. You know, just like Jurassic Park T Rex comes on, just like everything from every. I just hope the Thimble gets a good storyline. <laughs> I can't wait for his solo song, <laughs> or hers, whatever, or its. Maybe it's a Thimble family. Yeah. Well, on to more depressing news. <laughs> oh, good. I'm tired of this fun yes, musical. Uh, the classic game Othello. Uh, Japan, I believe, it, it's origin. Japanese story, yes. in origin. Uh, its creator has unfortunately died. That is correct. Goro Haragawa. Very important away. that you said because if I said it, it would sound like probably spaghetti because <laughs> I'm that bad at pronouncing things. Uh, 83 years old. Some kind of an illness. Not sure exactly what it was, but he was fairly old. Died, uh, yeah, creator of Othello. Apparently he was still kind of, like, you know, kept up with the tournament scene, stuff like that, that they still have. I don't know, what's here? We could talk a little bit about Othello. I mean, Othello, obviously, one of the most well-established games that there is. Pretty much, as, uh, Reversi is, as far as I know, exactly the same game, but I think there may be some small differences, but sometimes you see it under the name Reversi. Uh, but it shows up in any kind of, you know, computer Yeah, didn't software. that actually appear in, um, is that the game that they played in Her Story? The, I mean, I'm mixing that up. Her Story, the computer game yeah, with the, like, with remember the there girl? Yeah, like whenever there was... Uh, I, oh, I think it's something like that. Something that like that, too. Included as an yeah. Easter egg in, the, in a video game called Her Story. Um, and, and, like, you know, Clubhouse games yeah. and DS. And, like, it usually goes along with you of Solitaire and Mahjong. There's Othello. Mm -hmm. It is, I mean, it's a simple but... Fun game. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's a reason why it stood out. For I don't. Someone. I don't know if we have any fond Othello memories of. I mean, I, I, I like my biggest memory of it is things in like Mario Party and different versions of it. Or um, I'm trying to think, what game was it? I think it was Mario 64 DS when they DS first came oh, out. Oh, the, the mini games. Screen. Yeah, yeah. One, it was like the different. It was Bob Hums instead of pieces, and they were like pink and black. And the, I th or, or there's one with Bowser. There's similar ones like that, but that's that. It's I guess it's I guess it must be that it must be a free domain thing because you see it everywhere. I don't know if Nintendo actually licenses that from 
from well, this Well, it might guy. be because if you change the name or something or... It's created, a, yeah, something like that, but... Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a classic. It's better than Go. Another hit for the uh, board game community. <laughs> yes, yes indeed. But, um, you know, it's, uh, he, he lived a long time, this guy, and had this contribution. Will not be forgotten, and I think there's still, there's still tournaments and stuff like that, so if anybody out there has Othello memories. Also, actually was named after the Shakespeare play. I didn't know if it was just a coincidence or not, but, but I read that it was, which was, which was kind, of, kind of neat. There's some, like, racial imagery and messaging going on there. I don't know the significance myself. There's probably some papers written on this somewhere by some college students. Check that stuff. I like strictly not professors, I think <laughs> college students. Yeah, I don't think professors would care. <laughs> but college <laughs> students would find it very fascinating. Um, tip of our hat to Othello and uh, go play a game of Othello this weekend in respect uh, in honor and tradition of, of that game. That's our Othello mm -hmm. and that's our news. Kickstarters are happening. Yes, they are. We have three of them for you today. Uh, the f I don't know anything about any of these, except for the one that I'm going to tell you. I was about to be a little worried, because I'm like, um... <laughs> Whoops! I'm just going to make it up. So, uh, Overseers. Tell me what that is. Oh, I know nothing about it. Okay, um, no. All right. Uh, the game, the idea of the game is sort of you're all gods trying to balance the world. Gods, specific, like, named gods or mm. new gods? I... At least not, not like it's the ones not we like, know. It's not like Thor no, or anything no, like that. No, it's like, I'm pretty sure from Japanese. Oh, I don't okay. know if it's actually from Japanese lore, but, or just slightly pulled from it. Okay. But the idea is you have these emotion cards, like anger, joy, greed. And the way it works is you actually choose five cards to play, but you only reveal three of them. Okay. And they all give you points. Like, I think anger alone gives you, po like, five points. Uh, I think it with joy, if you have three joys, it gives you points, like, they all act differently. It's sort of like uh, Sushi... Not, sushi Go, is that the game? Uh, probably. That With is the, a game. Yeah, no, yeah. it's like that. <laughs> like You remember how they act differently and how they give you points. Depending on how they Some are flat, them. some are more. Okay. But what happens is you do three and then hide the others. And then you guys bet on who has the better hand. Huh. Wait, so... Oh, so... You see the three face up, but it's kind of like a poker game. Yeah. And you, you just do, everyone has their own river, I guess, so to speak, and you don't know what it is. Right. And depending on who has the most, they either say, yeah, I think I have the most, in which they have to give up a card or something. I can't remember exactly. Or they say they don't. Then you reveal everything. If the person does have the best hand, he actually loses, like, more cards. <laughs> but if he doesn't, he actually gets a card from the graveyard. So there's all this bluffing involved. So you're trying to have the best hand without letting people know you have the best yeah. hand. Yeah. <laughs> Very interesting. And then, of course, like, you're, depending on who you are, you have special abilities. Like, you, some, I think, can change cards into other cards. Some can, like, uh, I think, get, add more cards and stuff. And then when you get points, it's actually hidden. So this is like some of the other games. So you don't know who's really winning until the very end. That's uh, yeah. I usually, usually like that. It's a little so you so you don't have to feel like halfway through. I might as well just leave because no, <laughs> that's a big thing. I think we've noticed with a couple other games. Yeah, I mean that sounds cool. Yeah, no, I, I, uh, that's what really caught me. The idea of this whole like half bluffing like sort yeah, of it sounds like, like a crap. It's like I've got a great hand. <laughs> But it's so good that's so obvious. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of hilarious. I like it. Sounds like a good twist on on poker. Yeah, and it only goes for nineteen dollars, which is very nice, I think, for yeah. kind of game. Today we have a few smaller, like pr cheaper games, which is no good. miniatures today. Right, no two hundred dollar behemoths, mm. <laughs> which is how I say that word. Um, but yeah, so check it out. Definitely a great game for bluffing, and if you don't have someone in your group who can always count and keep track of everyone's scores. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a good disclaimer. They actually had a review from Undead Viking in which he actually imagines he ha they have someone in that group, so they just play with the points revealed. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, forget it, we might as well. <laughs> and then I just remember thinking, like, maybe we should do that with Gary in some games. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and sometimes you'd have to be like, are we just going to make this poor guy like pop a vein count counting in his head, or should we just let, just let it be out there? All right, next... Uh, bon Appetit is the name of my game. It does have to do with being chefs, gourmet chefs. And the goal of the game is the first person who gets three stakes wins. <laughs> Couldn't be simpler. Basically, you have cards in your hands with different number values, and some of the cards you might have are stakes. And this is also not a bluffing game per se, but maybe a guessing game kind of, where once you, you play cards that add up to the number seven, that allows you to accuse someone of having a stake in their hand. If you're correct, you get the stake and you get to score it. 
Then there are different cards, like... Can you score your own stakes? There are cards that will let you score your own stake. Okay. Otherwise, you can't accuse yourself. <laughs> well, because I was just thinking, like, then it stinks to have a stake in here. Like, well... Right, it could be. It could be bad. And there's other cards that maybe will maybe stop. If someone accuses you, you can block it or block the blocking. Not so or, fast. Tofu. Right. <laughs> Redirect it. All kinds of things like that. Uh, but it's a very small, just a 15, 10, 15 minute game. Goes for only $11, but it has kind of pretty cute little artwork and, and it has stakes and food themes. So I thought it looked uh, entertaining. Yeah. yeah just a, but you know what goes well after you've had some steak? I would love to hear it. Dessert. <laughs> and it's summertime, so there's only one dessert you should be thinking of. Ice cream from ice cream trucks. So yes. Rocky Road a la mode is just about that. You are the man in the ice cream trunk, but you are not a werewolf trying to eat children. <laughs> <laughs> you, you read my mind. <laughs> but the point of the game is a simple card game, which, which you're going around the street trying to you know, sell the most ice cream to kids. Okay, all right. Which is a lot of fun. It's a simple matching colors and trying to get the, the combinations. You know, some kids just want one. They'll be like, I want a popsicle. I want a blue like spiral, and you got to have the ice cream. Is there a board? Or uh, there, yeah, there's a board that's the actual road and stuff. And okay. There's also like beaches and stuff, so like depending on the area you're in. It looked like a lot of fun, very simple, came from another game I haven't had to try it out yet because uh, they're green couch games uh, called Ooh. Jurassic Attack, which is actually a dinosaur dual playing game. Okay. That I just got, we haven't had a chance because, oh, okay. you know, if we get a two player game, we never get to play it <laughs> <Yeah>. pretty much. <laughs> but I, but that's a good. What's also cool is actually they have a micro game okay. called like, I forget the name of it, but it's like. Rocky Road dice game or something, but it's just like a card, a tokens, and three dice. And you can get that as an add-on, or uh, yeah. So it's I thought that was really cool that they have both. This also goes for nineteen dollars. I know synchronicity. So definitely check it out. I I almost like I wish that they kickstarted it earlier so that they could release it in the summer because it seems like a good <laughs> summertime. I didn't game. I don't I didn't actually look at the release date because I never look at that with kickstarters. Right, <laughs> it's probably. Not the summer. Probably. <laughs> it might be next summer. Uh, but yeah, that, that sounds good. I, we, I like food games, and I like games that have titles that rhyme. Mm -hmm. That's a big selling point. Well, now I'm me. hungry. Me too. You want to just cut out early? <laughs> no, uh, we, we got a few uh, more things. Yes, we do. A few more things. Uh, the first of which, so we played, we played a couple of games over the weekend. But uh, the big one. Are we going to talk about no, that? No, we're going to save that for later. Okay, I wasn't sure. <laughs> the first one we're going to talk about is Cinelinks. Yes. So this is a movie trivia, I guess you would call it, card game. We've had it for a long time now, but... You I, just got the new version. Right, so it was a Kickstarter originally. They have the new edition, which is on Amazon, which has more and cards. And the new box. <laughs> and the new box, which is a storage box, So because they have four or five expansions. So now you can fit them all in one box, whereas before I had a bunch of tiny deck boxes for them. Uh, so I was very happy. I actually sleeved them all with you know crappy penny sleeves, but turned still. out to be the wrong size. But yeah. it still works. <laughs> I think it still works. It works. They barely fit in the box. Uh, but this new version has new cards. They cleaned up some of the rules and some things like that. Uh, we played a game of it. it we it's a, I don't know if we've talked about it in the show or not before, but I I feel like movie trivia is a very hard thing to do as a game for a couple of reasons. One of the big ones is because. Like any trivia game, once you've heard the questions, you can't play well, it Well, I think what's nice about this, though, is not just, like, I mean, we love Witch and Waitress, but it's not like, hear the question, I know the answer. It doesn't matter if you know, oh, I know Tom Cruise is in this movie. Right. You have to know, is Tom Cruise is in this movie with this person who directed this movie? Uh, so that's, the game is all about degrees of connections. It's kind of like six degrees of separation or Kevin so, Bacon. Which I think actually it. keeps it fresh. And even if you do know the answer, it's not might not be your winning move. It might, like I think it, in this game you actually mentioned how you were holding on to cards because you knew you could connect them anywhere. Right, right. I was like, these are good cards, so I don't want to put it down because someone else will take advantage of how easy it is to make a connection to it. And you <laughs> want to use it as like the last card. Too. Yeah, so, it, it, yeah, it was, it's always a fun time. It's a, mm -hmm. I, like, for We should mention before yeah. we continue, mm -hmm. obviously Jonathan's very good at this. Like He knows all this stuff. I don't. But, but I still enjoy it. And, well, and we, in this game, you almost won. Yes. Every, I, everybody had like one card left, and I, I, I got lucky by winning because everyone else just happened to have to draw like before my turn. So it is a decent uh, game for you. Have to know about movies certainly, but you don't have to. You don't have to be like a super expert, although it helps. 
But it, it, I found it. It's, I think it's a great gateway game also for people who like movies but don't play a lot of board games. Oh no, it's fantastic! They'll jump on this. Right like I away. said, it is very simple. Like just a trivia, but it's done in a way that makes it so it can be repeatable. Yeah. And like I said, I'm not the kind of guy who knows names well. Like if it was just characters, I could probably do really well or pictures of them. Mm. But I still, like you said, I still came close. I mean, there's they made it a, a lot easier, especially in this new one. They added more things that make a little probably give me a little more of a leg up. I think they had some more recognizable yeah. movies and stuff in there. And also they'll do dual movies and things. Right, right. Which is still a lot of fun. And of course, one of the things they do, you didn't mention for the expansions. Let's say you're a big horror buff fan. There's a horror buff one, so you could you could make it so you. Just shuffle that in, so you're more likely to come across those. Yeah, or or there's a comic book and superhero movies one, which is great because everybody knows those these days. So right. That, that's that that would definitely add to the make it a little easier. And it does become really fun when you're trying to think of all these connections, and even in particular with the heavy movie buffs. You guys still over insurance? It was really fun to be like, does this work? And like with Ivan, you're just like. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, nope, nope. And then I think the reverse happened and stuff. It's just, I'm, well, my problem is I always want, I'm always like, well, I could just do this, but that's so easy. I want to come up with like the really cool, impressive, he was in this with this with this and like look smart. But then I spend yeah, 20 see, minutes I, on Yeah, you see, I don't care about that. I'm just like, <laughs> can I connect that? And the worst part is, like, I know, like, it's sort of funny, they changed the role. You said you think they make for more bluffing, but I'm like, God knows I can't bluff that. <laughs> <laughs> right, because if, if, if you play something wrong, if it's not challenged, you can get away with it. The thing is, I know I'll be challenged for it. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah it's, it's tough. Anyway, that's Cinelinks. You can find that on Amazon. Uh, highly recommend it if you like movies. Mm -hmm. now, if you don't like movies, stay away from it. Uh, now, but you wanted to talk about some magic card stuff. Yeah, I actually, the, I also, right after, the next day after we did all our stuff, uh, my brother had gotten a box of the new Masters... Uh, cards, a uh, box of that, and we played a, a small draft of six people. Okay. We got to look through some of those cards. He did get some nice cards. He didn't get the card he was hoping for, but he did get a, I forget the name of the card. It's a blue counter spell that I'm totally blanking on, which a lot of people are going to, Force of Will, uh, which goes that's for... That's behind us. Great, because that... <laughs> That's the card that in particular that apparently is going for like $100. I think, I think that was for. like their cover image. It was, because it's sort of a big card okay. in, in the legacy format. But it was really interesting because I actually, the way the tournament worked out when we played, I actually did really well, and I thought I was going to lose every game, which made me sort of angry that my deck was doing well. <laughs> like, because it was just little flying guys and counter spells, and I didn't have anything big. So I'm just like, oh, I'm just going to, like, use up all my things and die. But everyone kept losing to me. <laughs> I don't deserve this. No, that's actually what it felt like. Like, the first guy had this, um, like, he got his amazing combo out in the beginning, and then nothing happened afterwards, so I just kept beating his face in. The second person got all the elf cards, but some reason they weren't coming out in droves, so I still beat his face in with these little squadron hawks. Sounds like slow and steady wins the race. <laughs> well, only the last match where... The decks acted right. I got my I got kicked very hard. Uh, the winning combo was actually uh, this. The the girl got all these enchantress cards, which get plus one for every enchantment on the field, and okay. she just got all these enchantments and just like, okay, I swing for eight. I'm just like, my little one one can't block that. <laughs> <laughs> That's a shame. But it sounds like you gave it a good. It is, a and good fight. and it was the draft itself was a lot of fun because it was much closer compared to other magic drafts. It, Felt more like how, which you have played, Epic, the card game, you know. Mm -hmm. The cards are much more like, you open a pack like, I want this, I want this, I want this, I want this, I want this. Crap. A lot, a lot of good stuff. That's, yeah. That's good. That's and the, which it makes it even more disappointing thinking how, like I said, my brother did make back the money. In the, like, he got that. He got this uh, a holographic uh, Necropones, I think is the card, and some other things. So he got his money back in terms of the box. But this box goes for a lot. And it's a little disappointing. To that think, one's not behind us. No. <laughs> to think how expensive that goes for right right and when it really does provide the uh, at least in my opinion a much more interesting drafting experience it's not the all right there are two cards in here the rest is just junk I'm gonna it's kind it of a shame that like you have to spend that much money for such a good experience but i guess mm -hmm. if you're that in, well if you get a group of friends right. together that'll go in on it however there's one other thing i want to talk about which yeah. i didn't know about until the end apparently the magic packs usually come with a token it's like the token creature for so like if anything, oh okay like if something puts in one one soldiers or something on the back, though, it had, like, you know, play magic. But on the outsides, it had, like, half senses cut off. Apparently, if you, uh, there's an 11 by 11 grid of cards, which we did calculate 
is at least five boxes with no repeats, which is a little crazy, <laughs> assuming okay. you do it yourself. That makes a whole story about the next set coming out. Oh. Like, but it's, it's two stories. The way it works is if you read it this way, like horizontally, it's one story. Vertically, it's a different story. So like horizontally saying like, the great king Bragas is dead, but the queen will bring, uh, loyalty will be deserved. Well, the other one's like, the queen usurped the king. You do not follow her. She's evil. And so it's like oh, oh. this crazy dual story <laughs> thing going on. It's like, what? That sounds neat. It's just crazy, though, to think about, like, that's five boxes worth of tokens. <laughs> <laughs> it's worth it, man. You, gotta, like, you, you, had to be, you had to be in a card store that ran multiple drafts of this in order for you to actually see this story. You, you got to do it. Otherwise, how are you going to know? What are you going to do? Look online? And yes, that's exactly what we did. <laughs> oh, yeah, I guess that's true. Never mind. You, you don't have to do it. But it's really interesting and cool to check out. If you're into magic, look it up because it is an interesting story. And it's sort of funny because the set it's from is actually uh, from a world that was made specifically for drafting. Like literally there are cards in there that says, when you draft this card, put it out in front of you and stuff. And, that, and the idea is that it's all about conspiracies and it's all this weird stuff of backstabbing. So it's really cool to see them do this sort of not even related to this set alone. Sort of like a little teaser and story. Right, yeah, no. And I forget the names. There's three different kinds of magic players. I'm one just, like, one's for tournament, one who cares about story, one who cares about creatures. I'm a story guy. I love me my story. So <laughs> seeing this, I'm like, ooh. <laughs> Eternal Masters, look it up. <laughs> well, I think it's a If late. you haven't heard of it. <laughs> um, you know. Wizards of the Coast, though, that's not the only thing that they got brewing. That's right. Um, they have the Magic the Gathering board game. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we're just going to talk a little bit, uh, not too in-depth, but we did have our first session of the new Dungeons & Dragons campaign, not from a book or a set, uh, that I designed as Dungeon Master mm -hmm. and that we are planning on releasing very soon. I don't the know exactly episode. when. It might be in a week, it might be in a month, but soon. Mm -hmm. Uh, you will be able to actually listen to slash see a little bit some of the this our our new campaign Dungeons and Dragons. So I don't know. We can just talk a little bit about how what it was like. Probably it was more different for me than it was for you. Yes. Uh, well, first off, playing as my character was awesome. Oh, you did get to design your own character for the first time, which is yes. good. Yes. And you were a Dragonborn, which is yes. awesome. <laughs> Second thing, which is really hilarious, I want and I'm curious how you feel about this since you actually make the world and stuff. Mm. We have one non-unusual race. <laughs> right. <laughs> our, our people are very... I always think of the Guardians of the Galaxy because that's like... <laughs> no, like I, wanted, I almost want to do a drawing now because what our group consists of is there's a high elf, the regular race. Then there's a drow. Half drow. Half drow, sorry. Well, I wasn't sure if that's supposed to be secret or not. I think... You, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> there's me, the dragonborn. A half orc. A noble half orc, very important, and a tauren. <laughs> <laughs> a tauren from World of Warcraft, which is not typically in Dungeons and Dragons. And like, so what I want to draw, like in my head, I imagine like lined up, grouped together. I imagine the the drow and the elf looking at each other angrily. The like to the side of probably the drow, the dragonborn like looking at a butterfly go by because he's just a happy guy. The 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 orc, you know, is just like. <laughs> this is uh, not annoying. And then the Torn just like looking, you know, bubbles coming out because he's drunk constantly <laughs> with it. towering above the yeah. other characters. It's a motley crew to be sure. Yes. It's a, it's a strange hodgepodge of fellas, but I think we made it work. Mm -hmm. um, we all we got rolled three critical one, uh, misses on the first group test. I think we had one uh, critical hit on somebody had one on something, but I forget what it was. Maybe on that one? No, 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 oh. something else. Like throughout the whole game, but in general, uh, one of the, the biggest, the biggest difference that we should talk about that we did is our we did an entirely theater of the mind, so there there were no no gridded combat, no miniatures, and we didn't you didn't get into too much combat. We spent a lot of time in the exposition part of the of the campaign, uh, but. I think it. I, I was wor I was a little nervous because, I you know I wasn't sure of how hard it would be for people to keep track of who they were attacking and where they were, especially when there's more than one or two enemies at a time. But I think it went pretty well. I think it. I I, I was happy with how it turned out. Well, I think the issue will be should it come up mm. is when you probably throw like 13 zombies at us. <laughs> right. That's when things are going to get a little messy, and you might need your own little board. Right. Yeah. We'll have to we'll have to figure that out as we as we go through it. But 
I do like it because in a sense, like, uh, I don't want to discuss it until you guys see it, but there is one fight that in my head, because of the way we did it, was less gritty. In my head, I actually imagined, like, I saw my character, you know, well, he didn't run, actually. He, I was in center mode. But, like, the first part, like, when I, I, I attack with an arrow and then I turn and I see Neil's character run and dodge and roll behind a, a certain item and mm -hmm. stuff, like... No, I, I felt like... I don't know if it was all because of the greater combat or because also, you know, you guys have been uh, trained, more, ex more experienced than we were doing this for recording. Certain, but I felt like, at least in that fight, you guys were doing a little cool, creative. It wasn't just attack, move, attack, move. There were some interesting use of different spells and stuff like that, and, and, the, and the environment that I thought was. You mean uh, using Holy Flame to burn down a door? <laughs> that too. <laughs> that too. Sacred Flame. Sacred Flame. Uh, but yeah, so. It was it was a lot of fun. I was and a nervous you, wreck, but you mentioned to us mm -hmm. how you were actually surprised mm -hmm. in some ways how we jumped things, but at the same time we also prolonged things. It was very interesting, and I'm sure anyone who's ever mastered a game, yourself included, mm -hmm. uh, can attest to how like I felt like I was both I was over prepared in some areas and under prepared in other areas. Cause I was like, well, I don't have to worry about this. They're gonna do that later, but this I really need to get to, and this all the, some of the stuff that I like fleshed out, and I was like, oh god, it's the last minute. I gotta make this never even came up <laughs> and some stuff I was like time to start improvising well you even I think the, the thing I'm excited about is you said that some of the things you improvised you were like wait oh this is good yeah yeah there are some there are at least one or two characters that I was like all right I guess they have a backstory now <laughs> well, no I'm already imagining this one thing I'm like oh god this is gonna bite us in the butt so bad later <laughs> we will see we will see but uh, it was exciting and we will definitely keep you posted about when that's released mm -hmm. In the near future, very, very excited. There I definitely think it would be really cool yes. to do. This would be a little hard, though. It requires pretty much only you. It would pretty much put more work on you and solely you. All right. It would be for you to actually maybe make a, a video or even post an article. And obviously, we'll, we won't read it. We'll try not to. Mm -hmm. uh, of actually, your notes on maybe each, like, mm. notes on episode one. Well, I did this, and they expected to do this. This is why I throw this in. And this was actually a random encounter. This wasn't planned or something. Like, that would be interesting, I think that would be actually. really cool. And then at the end, it can be like, here, you can read all the secrets. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, even just post it as episodes go yeah, on so people can yeah. watch it. And then definitely, especially in particular, the I'm sure other... Uh, other dungeon masters could read that, and that I would, for you, then they could be like, "Well, that's a good idea." But what I did in this situation is I used the musical charm note or something, you know. I like that. I like that idea. That's I. I do. Uh, since you brought that up, I want to give a shout out because I've been listening to a couple of podcasts to try and help me prep. No, I actually really liked it because it didn't occur to me when you showed me. Uh, I forget which one. Critical Role. Yeah, I was just like. Oh, I should just watch this. Now I know how I'm supposed to act. Exactly. Like, it's great to see that demonstration and how they do it. There's another one I listened to, too, called Dungeon Master's Block, which is all about ideas and inspiration for Dungeon Master specifically. Uh, that is pretty, pretty good to listen to. So if you're looking for tips, that's, that's also, of course, the D&D subreddit helps. <laughs> also, thinking about now, Oracle is definitely the best way to go because that way Ivan won't look at it for video edit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. He's illiterate. So <laughs> he's going to watch this. All right. So definitely uh, check out when we actually air that first episode. Look forward to that. Just a few viewer comments we're going to get through. The first one is very appropriate. It comes from WWE is not punk rock, who says, I would like to see you cover more non-D&D <laughs> pen and paper games, maybe one every three episodes. Well, we have good news and bad news for you. <laughs> The, the good news is we'll be covering more pen and paper games. The bad news is it's mostly going to be D&D. Well, for now, but we are, because the D&D episodes are part of a new series we're thinking of doing. Uh, well, did we actually come up with a name yet? It's t TBD. TBD. Yeah. <laughs> but in essence, the idea is it's actually going to be us playing role-playing games. Yes. And sort of just more, while there will be some visual components, so you'll have to wait and see, but it's mostly going to be probably more of a podcast situation and of literally just audio. There's... Of at least a few Kickstarter indie RPGs that I have that are one-off sessions. one offs That would be great to Well, we do. also have, we mentioned playing, which we probably will reboot for. We have both the first two books of the World Ending series from the Right, the Fancy end of the Flight. world. There's always Pathfinder. We'd love to jump. If there's any, and with Catalyst, which we did play a little bit of, we have a video yeah. for Catalyst, which we'd love to get back into. So, yeah, we actually do have plans for it. It's just we want to try to use D&D &D mostly definitely to get our feet 
well, and sort of get our groove into the... As we said, this is really our first time in the yeah. pen and paper role-playing game. And unfortunately, RPGs take a long time and a lot of commitment and preparation. Well, the bigger thing is just getting the right groups. That too, getting people together. It's, it, it, it's not that easy, as people I'm sure know. That's why some of these one-offs will also be really good because they're, they are designed to be easier encounters. Yes, no, definitely. Odds are uh, the other world ones will be one-offs because... Yeah. D&D is hard <laughs> enough to get the large group. So let us know if any others in particular you want us to check out. Um, we also talked about the new Fugitive Kickstarter game from the designer of Paperback, Tim Fowler's... Sorry that I said your name that way. Web Jaker commented, said, You mentioned Paperback and Fugitive, but no mention of my favorite game that Fugitive is derived from, Burgle Brothers. That is a game from the same designer that I think is kind of... This is Fugitive's kind of a spin-off of... We haven't played it, so that's why we didn't talk about it. But I have heard good things, uh, and I'm sure, based on what we like about that designer, that it's a, probably a good game. Burgle Brothers, Burgle Bros. I don't mm -hmm. know if you're supposed to say brothers or not. You can check that out. Um, we did our review of Splendor, mm -hmm. the app version. Daniel Enoch Tobin uh, says that he's played it on the touchscreen of a Surface and that it works flawlessly for two people looking at the screen at the same time. Uh, more than that might get tight, but they said it's one of the best board game adaptations for the computer because it has no elements that are hidden from other players, which is something that I hadn't thought about before that, like in Ticket to Ride, you, you can't pass, you know, when you pass it, you have to pass it around because you, someone can see your hand. But with Splendor, or probably some other games I can't think of, anybody can look. There's nothing secret, so it does make a really yeah. good... and the other big thing is, which I'm sure we've, I've brought up for both of them, and which uh, there's no instance, meaning like right. there's not going to be something like you know you have the app like okay I'm doing this and be like hold on give me the phone I'm doing something let me see no interrupts yeah you're you're fine how would that even work you couldn't do that on a no you could unless not unless it was online that's the only way you can do it yeah, yeah it'd have to be Hearthstone <laughs> yeah uh, so that's good thank we we appreciate all all your thoughts on apps and all those things. Of course, we, the one we cannot go... With, last week, we also responded to a comment about our insane clown posse uh, video. Since, like, right after that, we did that podcast, we got, like, a 20, 20 more <laughs> comments from angry, insane clown posse fans who were very, very upset with our treatment of the game. Uh, that, it, in fact, we, you know, we, we, didn't, we didn't do our research there that... Uh, there, there, the other game that we couldn't find is called Morton's List. Is that, that's right. That we actually looked up, which is, I think, noteworthy in that it's, uh, the game was banned from Gen Con. <laughs> because it's basically a, a truth or dare, or not even just a dare game that you just pick out of a hat and it says, go do this thing. And some For an hour. Yeah, right. And some of them involve, like, dangerous activities and illegal substances. <laughs> and some of them are like, go out for a walk in nature. Weird. I don't know if I'd call this a tabletop game, but it's, it's an activity, uh, nonetheless. You can actually go online and find this game and, and play it uh, for free. Um, uh, and, uh, yeah, but people were, people were real upset. <laughs> they, those, the Juggalo community was not happy with our, with our light ribbing of the fact that there are card games based on a band. <laughs> I, I think it's funny no matter what, no matter what band that, that it is that you're based on, but that's, that's just me. So our, our apologies, I'm sure they aren't watching this anymore. They all, <laughs> they all, they all, none of, they didn't subscribe. They, they were not looking for, for more hits, but I thought we went pretty easy on them. I, we didn't, I don't think our video was actually that inflammatory. I don't know, you said the same thing when you made all those terrible jokes at the cemetery. <laughs> what, what he's doing right now is trying so hard to be the good cop so that he doesn't no, get the death no, from actually, the juggalos. No, 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 no. Oh, I'm already doomed from that. Uh, no, what I was trying to be, I was about to make a joke and realized I was about to make something that would probably anger another group of people. I'm like, like I was literally one word away just about to say like, no, don't say that. <laughs> Those darn women. <laughs> that wasn't the one. Um, anyway, uh, Sam Clown Posse is a terrible band with awful music. <laughs> I like how you say he's just trying to be the good and then you say that it's like I don't have to do anything I, said, I, I just wanted to clear the runway so that I could put, put that plane out there they aren't good you wear clown makeup 
get over yourselves. <laughs> um, if you're a juggalo and you want to send us a death threat <laughs> or uh, you have any other suggestions or questions about any kinds of board games that you like or don't like, please leave a comment on this video or you can write us an email, rollforcredit at gmail.com. And of course, we're on so many other social media platforms, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, the works. It's never been easier to send death threats than in this day and age. Uh, and our oh website God. is rollforcrit.com, where you'll find more of these podcasts, more videos. Plus, we sell games, including Dungeons & Dragons, the original versions of Ticket to Ride, Doomtown Reloaded, but get it while it's hot, folks. Splendor. <laughs> Splendor, all that stuff is up there. Great prices, great deals, always low prices, always Walmart. That's Roll for Crit. Dot com. Uh, and that's going to do it for this episode number 101. Hope what? you had fun. Hope you had fun. 101 Dalmatians. I'm Jonathan Esses. I'm Will Keeler. And this has been Roll for Crit. I already said it. Sorry. <laughs>